Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the latest Android 14 GSI ROM on your phone. So do note that this is an AOSP ROM with just the bare bone features. There are not many customization tweaks or features as such. The reason why I'm showing you this video is because in the near future, when the likes of Pixel Experience, Evolution X or the Lineage OS GSI ROMs are available, then you could refer to this video and install that ROM as well. Although I will be uploading separate video for all those as well. But as of now, I am just making this video which could act as a base for all the other videos as well. Moreover, most of the developer use the AOSP build only to make their own ROMs. So that is why the AOSP build are extremely important from the development point of view. And as of now, if you are looking to get a clean stock OS experience with no Google Apps, then the this AOSP ROM might be your best choice. It's running on the latest Android 14 build. So with that said, please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. I have done the extraction in C drive as you could see. These are the files of platform tools folder. Once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the boot order on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu. Then from there, you will have to go to about phone and now tap on build number seven times. In case of Xiaomi phones, you will have to tap on MIUI version seven times. This will give you a prompt that you are now a developer. So now go back and go to system. You should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. You might get an RC key prompt as well. So check mark always allow from this computer and tap on allow. With this debugging is now enabled. Let's now verify the same. So go to platform to folder address bar. Type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. Likewise, tap on revoke USB debugging to refresh the debugging connection. So try out these USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. In this regard, so if that's well and good, then please take a backup of all the data and you could then refer to my guide to unlock the bootloader on your phone. In On most phones such as the Pixels and the, and the OnePlus, you just have to use the password flashing unlock command and once you use that command, the bootloader will be unlocked on the... Uh, other hand, for some other phones such as the Xiaomi phones, you will have to use the Mi Unlock tool. So I have listed all the phones and OEMs and their unlocking guides. You could refer to this guide and get the job done. Once you have unlocked the bootloader, let's now move ahead. So now you will have to download the Android 14 GSI ROM. As of now, as I have told you, it's the AOSP build. So get it from here, open this link. And now comes the important part. So under here, as you could see, there are quite a, a lot of six ROMs. So which ROM should you download? So as of now, there are either ARM32 or ARM64. So most of the phones nowadays are ARM64 build. Moreover, there are a doubt regarding the VNDK light or the non-VNDK light. So let's check both of these, whether your phone supports ARM64 architecture or 32 ar architecture and whether your phone is VNDK light or non-VNDK light. For using that, I have made a separate guide on the same. You could go through my guide. I will highly recommend you to go through it once. But in short, here is what you need to do. Simply install the Treble Info app from Play Store. Once you have installed the app, launch it. Name is Treble Info. Now go to the details section. And from here, first off, check out the CPU architecture. As you could see, it's ARM64. So you will have to download the ROM, which is ARM64. Next up, check out the section next to Linker namespace isolation. So as you could see in my case, the VNDK is not in light mode. So we have to download that GSI ROM, which is non-VNDK. So it's a non-VNDK 
ARM64. So let me show you. So this is ARM64 and VNDK light. This will not work in my case. So this is the ARM64 and non VNDK light. So I'll have to use this ROM. So make sure to go through the CPU architecture and the VNDK light. Since it's not in light mode, so you will have to download the non VNDK mode. So this is the ROM which we have to download. So make sure to get the ROM from here. Once you have got the ROM file, your next course of action is to extract the ROM. So for that you could use the 7-zip software as well. So let me show you. So the ROM file will initially be in the exit format. So right click on it and then select show more option. Then select 7-zip and choose extract to system. And with this the file will be extracted. Once it's extracted you will get the ROM file over here as you could see. It's the system ARM64 AB vanilla IMG. It's the vanilla build with no GFs. So simply copy it from here. And you now have to paste the GSI ROM inside the platform to folder on your PC. So let's paste the GSI ROM over here. Once that is done we have got the GSI ROM. Let's now move ahead. So now you will have to download the VBMeta file for your phone. So for that first and foremost download the stock firmware. Make sure to download the same firmware which is currently installed onto your phone. You could verify the same from the build number. So either go to about phone in some or in some phones it's under the system section. In my case is the about phone build number. You will have to verify the build number of your phone. So in my case it's the 11079 KB05DA. It's the region so it's 11079 so I'll have to download the same firmware version. So make sure to download the same firmware which is currently installed onto your phone. Once you have got the firmware you will have to extract it. In most cases the firmware is simply in a zip file. So you could simply extract the zip file via WinRAR or WinZip or 7zip. But in case of OnePlus the firmware is in a payload bin file. So let me show you. This is the once you download the firmware initially it will be in a zip file. Upon extracting the zip, you will get a folder with around 3 files. Out of this, we need to extract the payload.bin file. And for extracting the payload.bin file, you need a tool, open source tool, which goes by the name of Fastboot Enhance. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to my guide and get the job done. In short, simply download the Fastboot Enhance tool from my guide. And once you have got the tool, let me show you. This is the tool. Simply copy the payload.bin file from the stock firmware and paste it inside the fastboot enhance folder. As you could see this is the file. So now you have to launch the tool. So after that go to payload dumper, hit the browse button and now select the payload.bin file and click on open. And now you have to go to the partition tab, select the vbmeta file and click on extract image and choose the location. So let's choose desktop. So with this we have extracted the vbmeta file from the current stock firmware. Once you have got the vbmeta file, you have to transfer the file onto the platform tools folder on your PC. So let me copy the file from here and transfer it to the platform tools folder. So with this the vbmeta file and the gsi rom should both be inside the platform tools folder. Once that is done, let's now move ahead. So now you will have to boot your phone to fastboot mode. So for that open the cmd window and type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone should not boot into fastboot mode in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait. Do keep in mind that this screen might vary depending on the phone that you own. In my case it's the oneplus phone so this is the fastboot screen. Once you are in the fastboot mode your first course of action is to verify the fastboot connection. So just type in fastboot devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting a serial id. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install fastboot drivers. I have made a separate guide on the same. You could refer to my guide and install the drivers. Once the drivers have been installed, use the Windows X shortcut keys and choose device manager. Then expand Android phone and make sure that your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signifies that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and you are now good to go ahead. So next up you will now have to disable the verification or the verity check. For that we will be using the VB meta file. So simply copy this entire command 
and make sure that the file is there inside the platform to folder then open the cmd window and paste the command there so just a minute let me copy it and paste the command inside the cmd window and hit enter so it will now flash the vb meta file and disable the verification check as well once that is done your next course of action is to reboot your phone to fastboot d mode so for that you will have to type in fastboot reboot fastboot and hit enter and your phone will now reboot in, into the fastboot d mode this screen might also vary depending on the phone that you own in my case it's the oneplus phone so the screen you are seeing it's the fastboot d mode for the oneplus phone as you could see from here the screen will be different for different phone so now that you are in the fastboot d mode you will now have to delete the product partition this is because the system partition does not have enough space to flash the gsi rom since the gsi rom is a system partition file and we already have a system partition which is not enough so we will have to remove one of the partition from our phone to make space for the gsi or the system img file so as of now we will be removing the this partition from our phone so simply copy this command and paste it in the cmd window and hit enter and it will now remove the partition as you could see the partition has now been removed once the partition has been removed let's now move ahead and now you could flash the gsi rom now for the ease of convenience let's rename the gsi rom to something shorter so let's just rename it to gsi so that the complete name becomes gsi.img once that is done you could now simply flash the gsi rom to the system partition on your phone so type in fastboot flash system and the name of the file which is gsi.img and hit enter the gsi rom will now be flashed into the system partition and it could take around a couple of minutes depending on the gsi file that you are flashing in our case we are flashing a gsi which is bare bone with no features as such so it should only take a couple of minutes so let's just wait for the flashing to complete so guys with this the flashing is now complete and now you will have to do a factory reset or format data this will remove all the data from your phone so type in fastboot space dash w and hit enter and with this the format data is now complete once that is done you could now reboot your phone to the os let's verify the same so we have done a format data and now you could reboot your phone to the os so just type in fastboot reboot and hit enter and your phone should now reboot to the newly flashed os as i have told you before this is just a bare bone aosp rom with no features as such this rom will be used by many developers to make their own gsi rom it will act as a base rom for all the other gsi developers in the near future as and when the likes of pixel experience or lineage os ci droid evolution x rom as and when they are available i'll also make the video for them but if you want you could check out this video as well once so currently as you could see it's the just a bare bone with a few apps installed there are no google app packages installed as you could see from here if you want you may additionally install the g apps i'll make a separate video but at the time of recording the video there are no android 14 g apps available that is the reason why i haven't yet flashed the g apps so both the nick g apps as well as the mind the gaps they are not yet available for android 14 as and when they get available i'll make a separate video and link that video over here so that you could go through my video and flash the gfs as well since as of now there are no gfs available so we are using this rom without any google app packages and this is the qs tiles as you could see this is the settings menu and depending on the phone that you own the ph trouble settings might vary in my case as you could see i have a few oneplus features as well enable usb otg double tap to wake and high brightness mode display mode then there are a few qualcomm features as well apart from that you get those features then miscellaneous feature sets some from here force fps so there are a few tweaks as you could see from here but these features are especially the miscellaneous tweaks are for development use only so make sure 
to verify what you are doing and then only do that beforehand. So as you can see, these are quite a handy tweaks. All these tweaks are definitely quite useful. But from the developer point of view, as of now, if you want, you may try out these tweaks and check out the result as well. So apart from that, then we have the IMS feature usually for the APN and the 5G networks for Qualcomm network. Then some customization tweaks which are very few. So icon shape should not be there as of now. Okay, icon shapes are there. You could choose from around six to seven icon shapes. So still, as I was thinking, it does have a few customizations. Font family, okay, so there's only one font family. I can pack, so you will have to install I can pack third party I can pack from Google or Play Store. So let me show you the other aspects of this. The display and everything is as such purely AOSP based. The wallpaper is just the bare bone wallpapers as well. Then we have the about phone as you could see from here. It's the latest Android 14 build based on the October patch. And here is the Android 14. So let me go back now and so this was guys this was all from this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.